were Enoch and Job sinless? So the Bible calls them righteous, and righteousness is the opposite of sin. So someone might conclude, I guess they were sinless. I guess they never sinned. Let's read the two passages where you might be able to derive this from. Let's read Job 1, 1 first. It says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and turned away from evil. Wow, that, that does sound like, you know, Job was sinless in a sense. You could you could almost make that argument. Genesis 5.24 says, Enoch walked with God and he was no more because God took him. So some people will say, look, this shows that Enoch was sinless and they didn't deserve to die and therefore God took him away and took him into heaven. He didn't deserve death. Now there are a few reasons why we should believe that this is mistaken and Enoch was not sinless, but that he actually did die and he did sin. The first is that Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned. I don't see why we would think that Enoch would be an exception to that. He was born with flesh, you know, the sinful flesh that Paul calls it in Romans, just as we were. So to think that he actually lived an entire life sinlessly, you would need some really, really compelling evidence to conclude that. And secondly, the Bible says the exact opposite. In Hebrews 11:13, it says, all these people were still living by trust when they died. And it had just got done listing Enoch as one of the people who lived by trust. But what does it say there? It says they died. So Enoch is listed in the people who died. Therefore, the author of Hebrews testifies that Enoch died. So what does Genesis 5:24 mean? What does it mean that Enoch was not? Well, the Hebrew text just literally means was not. So he was taken away from where he was. I think that means that he was literally physically removed from where he was and moved to a different location in order that he would not die. He was saved from death. Because again, in Hebrews 11, it says that Enoch died. So I don't think we should conclude that somehow Enoch really never died and went to heaven. That's the exact opposite of what Hebrews teaches. Interestingly, Hebrews 11.5 says, By trust, Enoch was moved so that he would not see death, and he could not be found because God moved him. For before he was moved, he obtained the testimony that he pleased God. So how did he please God from the texts? How does Hebrews 11.5 say that he pleased God? It was by his trust. It wasn't by being sinless. So you can please God through trust. That's specifically what the text says. This also aligns with Genesis 15, 6. It says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So how was Abraham made righteous or in a right standing with God? It was not by being sinless. It was by trusting God. That's how you could be made righteous. So I think that's how Enoch was able to be in this hall of faith and how he was called a man who walked with God. I'd like to also point out that it does not say that Enoch was sinless. The text never says that. It just says that he walked with God. This is a pretty common Hebrew phrase for someone who had trust in God and who feared God. That's simply all it means. The second person, Job. Was Job sinless? The main reason why I think Job was not sinless is simply from the rest of Scripture that testifies that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that you can be attributed righteousness to yourself by trust. And clearly, it does say in Job 1.1 1, 1, that Job was a man who feared God, which is another way of saying that he trusted God. So that would be how he would be considered righteous. So we should not confuse the two, sinless, sinlessness and righteousness. Those are two different things. We can be righteous, but no man has been sinless. The beautiful thing about this too is God has always been gracious. He was gracious to Job. He was gracious to Enoch. He was gracious to Abraham. And he will be gracious to us. This is an amazing promise. Let's read Romans 4, 5. It says, But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who declares the ungodly person righteous, his trust is credited to him as righteousness. So he's saying here, he can make ungodly people righteous. How? By trust. So, we can be called righteous just like Job was and just like Abraham was. How? By our trust. That's amazing. We don't have to work. It says the one who does not work. 
That's incredible. We can't possibly earn this righteousness. It's a righteousness that's given by grace, as Ephesians 2 8 says. So, how amazing is that? Just like the Old Testament saints, we can be considered righteous, not because we're sinless, but because of our trust. Thanks so much for listening.